Numerical Computation, Chapter Eleven, Video Six. We now turn our attention to a different type of differential equation. It's a parabolic type, and the typical one is the so-called heat equation in one space dimension. And、uh, the solution also depends on time t, so it depends on two variables t and x, and the derivatives are partial derivatives. Okay, so the equation、um, has the unknown u, which is、um, typically the temperature. You can consider temperature in the rod with unit length, so u sub t equals to u sub x x. First order derivative in time and second order derivative in space, and normally there will be a constant in front of u. But let's take it to be one for the time being. You can add it on later on, and everything can be worked out in a completely similar way. So the equations define on the interval from zero to one, and the equation is equipped with the Boundary conditions at、um, x equals to zero and x x equal to one. Let's say now we、um, fix the temperature of the rod at the two ends to be the zero degree. Let's say you are using Celsius. Oh, please use Celsius, and then you mix some ice with water, and then you touch the end of the rod with that mixture, so the temperature will be zero. And then there is an initial condition at time equals to zero. There is some temperature distribution profile in the rod, and let's denote it by some function f of x. Okay, so we need to um again set up a grid. So first we set up a grid in space, in x. Okay, so fix a constant m, some number big constant number, um. And then delta x, the grid size in x will be one over m, and then each grid point x j will have j times delta x for j running from zero to m. So x zero will be zero, and x capital M will be one. And we also make a uniform grid in time t, choosing a time step length. We call it delta t. And then t zero will be zero, and t n will be just taking delta t each time. So it's n times delta t for n going from zero one two, all the way until you reach your final computing time, and then you stop. So the goal for our numerical method is to find approximate solutions only at the grid point. Okay, so the grid points here will be. Where x equals to a certain j, and where t equals to a some t n for certain n, and we denote the approximation of it to be a double indexed u, and since one of the index is space and the other is time, the conventional way was to put the space index as the subscript and the time index as the the upper script. Okay, so u. J top n. That means an approximation at x j and at t n. So the tool for us to discretize the heat equation is nothing but、um, some finite differences for the derivative. So for the time derivative, this is first order. So we just set a finite difference. So u at n plus one minus u n for the same j divided by delta t. And for the space, we have second derivative, so we throw in central finite difference. So we by now we shall be very familiar with this one. Okay, so fix n, think that's constant, and then just vary j and write out this finite difference. And we know this is a second order, and then this is a first order, normally. Okay, the first method we will learn here is an Explicit method. It's called forward Euler, also called explicit Euler time step. So what we do is we think of approximating the derivative at x j t n 
using information forward in time for the time derivative. So will be m plus one for u j and minus u j n divided by delta t equals to u x x. Okay, so remember, so this is u t, and what you have here, this will be u x x. Approximately, this is a discrete version of it. Okay, so we can clean up a little bit. We can multiply this equation by delta t on both sides, and then we have this constant delta t over x squared on the right hand side in front of everything. To simplify notation, let's call this gamma. Okay, um, and we can move this term to the right hand side as well because um un is given at this time step and we would use the information of u at level n to compute the u at level n plus 1. So we keep the u at n plus 1 to the left hand side and move everything to the right hand side. And then for u with index j minus 1 we just have gamma multiply by it but for u with index j I get one term from here that's negative 2 gamma but then I get this term moving over, which gives me 1 in front. So I get 1 minus 2 gamma in front of this u. And then the last one is this term here, which is multiplied by a gamma. Okay, so this is the discrete heat equation. So the scheme is equipped with uh, initial and boundary conditions. And the initial conditions are given at t0, that is when n equals to 0. So when n equals to 0, we have the initial temperature distribution profile, which is a function f as a function of x. So for each index j, it shall equal to f at xj for each j when n is 0. And the boundary conditions um, will be when um, j equals to 0 on the left, it shall be 0, and when j equals to n on the right, and u shall be 0 for any um, time index n. Okay, so boundary temperature is fixed here. So we make the um, observation that the method now is a first order um, in time, because we use the forward Euler, and the second order in space, because we use the um, second order central finite difference. Um, we can also have this computational stencil, which shows us the um, dependence of the solution um, at different levels. So we see that in, in order to compute the temperature right here at n plus 1 in the position j, I would need three datas at the previous level tn, namely for j minus 1 and j and j plus 1. Okay, so um, hope that was useful and you enjoyed it. I see you next time.